Well, hi kids, Pastor Al here. Nice to be with you again this morning. Hope you're all doing well. It's starting to get chilly out, isn't it? Fall is really here, and I know some of you are back to school, and I bet that's a lot of fun, even if it's a little bit different. I want to tell you a story about me today, but I want to tell you something about, well, dogs first. You know, I, I love dogs, and I think we all love dogs because dog, one of the reasons is dogs are so trustworthy, aren't they? You can always rely on them to do the right thing and, and to treat their fellow dogs and, and people really well. Well, well, maybe you can't always rely on that. Let me show you a couple of examples of when that doesn't really work. Okay. So every now and then a dog steals something he's not supposed to. I want to tell you kind of a sad story about me. Um, something you may be surprised about, but it was a time when I stole something that I wasn't supposed to. Uh, it was very wrong. It was very bad. And years and years and years later, I still feel very sorry about it. Let me tell you the story. Years ago, I had a friend when I was in junior high, and his name was Joe. And I thought Joe was pretty cool and pretty smart. And I wasn't all that popular, and it was really nice to have a guy that I thought was cool who would let me hang out with him. Well, one thing that Joe would do every now and then is he would go to a store that was a, a, a magazine store. We don't have anything like it in, in Ellensburg, but it was downtown Los Angeles. Big cities have these uh, magazine stores that are filled with magazines and books, and, well, at least they used to. And every now and then he'd want something in there and he decided he wasn't going to pay for it, so he would steal it. He would shoplift it. He would pick it up carefully, he'd shove it under his coat, and then he'd walk out of the store with it. And what he did was have me help him. He would have me stand between him and the owner of the store, who was at the cash, a cash register. Or I would watch to make sure that nobody was coming when he did it. This was back before security cameras. Now. At least I have to say to you that I never actually stole anything. I would never have done that. I never took anything he stole, even though he asked me if he wanted uh, if he wanted him to steal stuff for me. Um, but even if I didn't do that, it was still very wrong, and it was still just like stealing to help somebody else steal. Now, I'm sure you're saying, like, Pastor Al, why did you do that? And there's actually only one reason I did that was because my friend wanted me to help him do that. And I wanted him to be my friend, and he was the guy I hung out with. And I figured if I didn't help him, then he wouldn't like him anymore. I wouldn't get to hang out with him. It was a very classic example of having your friend lead you to do the wrong thing. I've never done it again, um, never stolen anything ever after that. And yet I still feel bad about what I did because it was very wrong. Now, there's a bigger lesson here that I learned then that I hope you get to learn without making a big mistake like I did, is that very often the people who are our friends are the ones who have a lot of influence over us. And if we hang out with the wrong kind of people, we wind up making the wrong kind of decisions. We do things that our friends want us to do that we know are not the right things to do. We know are not things God wants us to do. But we do them because of the people we hang out with. And, well, if they don't bother the people we're hanging out with, then why should they bother us? One of the choices you're going to have to make as you grow older and you pick your own friends is who you hang out with. Who are your friends? And how will they influence you? I hope you'll make a better choice and a better decision than I did when I was young. I hope you'll find people to hang out with and be your friends who won't do bad things who won't ask you to help them do bad things. But just remember that the company you keep, the people you hang out with, are the people who are going to influence your life. If they're good people, and especially if they're people who love Jesus and are trying to follow God in their life, they're probably going to help you be a better person and be more faithful to God. And if they're not, well, then they're probably not. 
So be very careful who you choose for friends, who you hang out with, because it can make a huge difference in your life. If you choose the right kind of people, they're going to help you make right good decisions, and they're going to help you grow closer to God, and that's what we want. So think about that, friends. It's nice to be with you again this morning, and I hope you have a good week, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.